Hi, everybody, and welcome again to Z-Code Sports System. Here we develop automated systems to help you win big every time. And again, it does not matter what sport you're betting on. We have you covered. So before we get into uh, Major League Baseball action for the first weekend of the season, I want to remind you to join the VIP club section here, and you'll have all the tools that you need to help you make your picks. So for the first weekend of the Major League Baseball season, there are lots of interesting matchups going on. So we're going to take a look at some of these. So we're going to scroll down through here and take a look at some of these games. The first one we want to take a look at is the Atlanta Braves and the Philadelphia Phillies. The Braves are average up and the Phillies are ice cold down. Now remember, remember these are based off of a spring training action. You can see the last six games, the Braves are 4-2 and two, and the Phillies are 2-4. and four. If you look at the power rankings indicator, you can see that the Phillies are at plus 19. And the Braves are at plus 10. Look at head-to-head -head matchup from last season. You can see here that the teams split the, the 10 meetings. If you scroll down through here, you will see all the games. August from last year and down to August the 8th. From August 8th up to August the 30th. And you can see again, they were both 5-5. Five and five. If you're considering the over and under for this game, you can see that the Braves are trending in games over the line. The Phillies are trending in games under the line. So because they're on opposite sides of the line, I usually avoid the over-under bet for that. The pitching matchups, Ian Anderson for the Braves and Zach Eflin for the Phillies. Take a look at the pitcher profit oscillator. You can see right here, plus 9 for Anderson and Eflin is at minus 308. So Eflin has been a worse bet overall than Anderson, although Anderson has a lot smaller sample size. If you look at the records from last season, Anderson was 3-2 and with a 1.95 ERA, and F1 was 4-2 and with a 3.97 ERA. What I'm looking at here, though, is that the Phillies are excellent at home. The Braves were okay on the road, but not nearly as good as the Phillies were at home. And F1 has a chance to really emerge as one of the better pitchers in the league after a very excellent strikeout ratio last year. I think the Phillies will win this last game in the series at home. Scroll down through here. You see there's a bunch of games here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but take your time if you want to look through all of these and see which ones you might want to bet on. Here's one that I think would be an interesting matchup in the AL East, the Baltimore Orioles and the Boston Red Sox. Now, both teams were near the bottom of their division last year and looking for bounce-back seasons. You see in the last six games in uh, preseason, the Orioles were 2-4 and four, and the Red Sox were 3-3. Three and three. The Orioles are ice cold down at the moment. As and uh, excuse me, and the Red Sox are averaged down. If you look at the power ranking indicator, you can see here that Boston has climbed up to plus 24, and Baltimore is down here at plus 8. You look at the head to head matchup between the two teams again, this is kind of the same case as with the Phillies and the Braves. You can see that in this divisional matchup from last year, they have won five each. You scroll down through the games and take a look at that. And even in the preseason this year, you can see that the teams split the two games between them. Bruce Zimmerman is scheduled to get the ball for the Orioles against Garrett Richards for the Red Sox. You look at their uh, pitch of profit odds rate, you see Zimmerman right here at minus 100. And that's an, an extremely small sample size. He was 0-0. A 7.71 ERA in just two games, and those are the only two games he has pitched in the major leagues. And the veteran Garrett Richards, you see he, he's been up and down, and right now he is at plus 384, so he's been a good bet overall for the Red Sox. Looking at the over and under for this one, you can see that Baltimore is playing in games trending under the line, and Boston is slightly over the line. Again, this is one where I'd probably avoid the over under because they're on opposite sides of that line. What do I expect is going to happen overall? Well, the Red Sox, I believe, will take care of business. They are the better overall team. They are playing at home with a veteran pitcher on the mound. Go with the Red Sox for the win. The Cleveland Indians and the Detroit Tigers. The Indians finished the game out of first place last year in the AL Central, and the Tigers came in last at 12 games out. You see right now the Indians are averaged down. 
the Tigers are burning hot down. So we will take a look at the last six games with uh, the Tigers winning three and losing one, and the Indians are two and three. If you look at the power ranking indicator, you can see here that Detroit is at plus 23. Cleveland is down here at plus eight. Again, this is based off of spring training action. You're considering the over and under for this one. Well under the line here for Cleveland. And well under the line for Detroit. So both teams have not been involved in high scoring. If this is a good classic example where you want to bet the under. Look at the pitching matchups. It is Aaron Savali for Cleveland and Tariq Skubal for Detroit. If you look at the pitcher profit oscillator, you can see right here, Savale is at minus 326, and Skubal is at minus 375. So neither pitcher has been a good profitable bet so far. So what do we think is going to happen in this one? Well, I think what's going to happen here is the Indians just are on a roll in the, in the series between these two teams. They won seven on the team right here, and I expect another one on Sunday on the road. St. Louis and Cincinnati, Minnesota and Milwaukee. This will be a good match. We're going to take a look at this one. Minnesota won the AL Central last year, and the Brewers were fourth in the NL Central. Right now, the Brewers are burning hot, and the Twins are average. If you look at the power ranking indicator, you can see here Milwaukee's up here plus 25, and Minnesota, they were down to plus 3, and now they're back up to plus 12. I expect that to continue to rise as we get into the season. You're looking at the over and under. Total predictor. You can see here Minnesota is playing in games trending over the line. And Milwaukee playing in games trending under the line. So I would avoid the over and under again on this one. Take a look at the two pitchers. Michael Pineda is scheduled to pitch for the Twins. And Adrian Hauser is going for the Brewers. Pineda was 2-0 with a 3.38 ERA last year, and Hauser was 1-6 with a 5.3 ERA. If you look at the pitcher profit oscillator, you can see here that Hauser is very low here at minus 847. He's been a terrible bet, and Pineda has been an excellent bet at plus 278. And you can see where, where this one's heading. I expect the Twins to come away with the win with Pineda on the mound on the road. Texas and Kansas City. We're not looking at that one. Pittsburgh and Chicago. Los Angeles and Colorado. This is the last game we're going to look at for the day. And this is maybe the game of the day. An NL West battle between the world champion Dodgers and the Rockies. Both are in the burning hot category right now. They have been playing very well. If you look at the power ranking indicator, Colorado actually has a plus 16 to plus 7 advantage on that. But again, with the Dodgers being such a great team, I expect that to change as time goes by. Remember, this is just the first weekend of the season, and these numbers are based off of spring training play. Head-to-head, -head, last year, the Dodgers had the number of the Rockies. If you see here, I'm going to bring this up. These are the preseason games in March. We look last year, here's September. And you scroll down through here, you can see that the Dodgers won most of these games. And in fact, the Dodgers did win seven out of the ten meetings. Look at the over-under. You can see that here, the Dodgers are playing in games trending over the line. The Rockies playing in games trending under the line. This is a classic example, again, to avoid betting the over and under. Look at the pitching matchups. Julio Urias is going for the Dodgers and Austin Gomber for the Rockies. Urias. Uh, 3-0 with a 3-2-7 ERA last year. He pitched well. Gomber was 1-1 one one with a 1.86 ERA and a smaller sample size, but he also did quite well. Look at the pitcher profit oscillator. You can see here that Gomber on a much smaller sample size, plus 16. Excellent bet in, in those games. And Urias was at minus 70. Still, though, even with those numbers, it's very hard to bet against the Dodgers. They're clearly the better team, even though they're playing on the road. I feel like they will find a way to come away with a win. So there you have just some other games you can take a look at. If you went to Houston and Oakland, Arizona, San Diego.
Chicago and the Angels and so on and so forth. The odds from the games are not yet posted, but they should be there shortly in the next day or two. The odds for these games should appear. So there you have it. Enjoy the first weekend in the Major League season. Happy betting, and we will see you next time.